pusat uh, what you call it pengajaran dan teknologi pembelajaran lah Kolej Universiti Islam Perlis dengan kerjasama bahagian pembangunan bakat Jabatan Pendaftar. Okay, uh, so as we aware uh, today we are going to conduct on the talk lah, especially uh, informal uh, sharing session on the topic of the MOOC, Massive Open Online Course. So for that, on behalf of COIPS also, we would like uh, with our, uh, what you call it, big heart to invite, to welcome our expert uh, from the uh, University Utara Malaysia, our chief guest, uh, Professor Dr. Fawziah Abdul Rahim. Uh, maybe I believe some of uh, uh, some of you might know her already. Cik uh, Asro tadi dah berbalas chat dengan Prof tadi. Then, uh, okay, a bit on brief, uh, Prof Dr. Fawziah, dia data. Eh? So, Prof Dr. Fawziah Abdul Rahim is a professor of educational psychology. Betul ya, Prof? Um, from School of Education. UUM College of Arts and Science, University of Utara Malaysia. Okay, Prof. Uh, Dr. Fauzia received her doctoral degree from the University of Nottingham in UK. She's specializing in the med mediated uh, learning. So, so memang expert lah dalam bak -bak PDP ya, Bos Moni. Okay, she has been with UUM since 1996. And during those years, those years uh, since uh, she joined the UUM, uh, she has been appointed to various administrative positions, including as the Dean of the School of Education, as well as the Director of UTLC there, which is uh, kita punya, kata, benchmark punya pusat lah. Kita di sini dinamakan CUTLTC, di sana UTLC lah, memang UTLC dah banyak so far have guided us lah, uh, provide training last year, macam kita ada send our few participants to KUPSA training, everything, which I believe uh, some of the participants here already met Dr. Fauzia, uh, Prof. Fauzia during that time in KUPSA last year. Then, okay, Prof. Fauzia has been actively involved in research, publication and training, and her passion for scholarship in teaching and learning has resulted her in receiving uh, the Distinguished Teaching Award by UUM in the year 2014. This is what I got from her itself directly. Okay. And then she also developed uh, during her directorship, especially, um, if not mistaken, under UTLC, right, Prof. Uh, already developed two MOOC courses for UUM, right? Uh, so this is uh, the correct person, the right person where we are uh, for our this session today. And then in which uh, she received the second place for one of them for the MOOC course development presented by Open Learning. So later mungkin Prof. Fauzia akan cerita lah pasal platform Open Learning as well, right? Then, uh, ni anugerah yang the, the, I think, not mistaken, the, lah, the most prestigious one is the she also received the 12th National Academy Award uh, for the teaching in the same year, uh, which is in 2018, right? Okay. So without wasting much time, uh, we would like to call upon uh, Prof. Fauzia to take over this session. So this session will be conducted in the you know, mixed English and Malay, right? So, a very good afternoon. Thank you, Encik Zaki, for the, for the brief biodata. I'm honored uh, to, to be invited to Kuips. Thank you, Encik Hasro. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I met Encik Hasro when I was the director of University Teaching Learning Center, uh, but I'm no longer the director of University Teaching Learning Center. I'm about to get myself ready for my sabbatical. Um, so, um, so I have a lot of time to do this training. 
Um, right. Um, uh, let me, before I begin, uh, let me share my slide. I hope there's no technical glitches. That, that last time that I did uh, uh, with Zoom, um, I had some problems with, uh, with the technical glitches. So inshallah, uh, may Allah make ease and, and everything will be fine. So yes, I'm Fauzi Abdul Rahim. Uh, I am working in the School of Education uh, in the University of Utara, Malaysia. Currently, I'm helping the school to run the center, which is called Future Learning and Development Competence Center, which I created when I was the dean. Um, but now that I'm back to the school again, uh, there, uh, the dean has the, the current dean has asked me to help the school to, to give some head start uh, before I pass it on to other people. Um, at the same time, I'm also the head of cluster for education, culture, and nation building um, for the UUM Council of Professors. If ever you need to contact me or um, after the session that you need some questions, uh, do drop me an email. Uh, inshallah, I will uh, reply. Right. Um, what am I going to be discussing about in the next sebab pukul berapa ya? Empat setengah ya, Encik Zaki? Ya, sampai empat setengah. Sorry, nak beritahu tadi dalam dua jam lah. Uh -uh. So, um, in the next roughly about one and a half hours is um, we're going to have um, a bit of um, four sessions. I've, I've divided into four sessions. So the first part is um, we'll give you an introduction of what I mean, the basic understanding of what MOOC is. Um, then I will also, we will also discuss about why do we need MOOC? Um, you know, what are the benefits? Who will benefit? And then we will move to part three where I share. Um, I think I'd like to, I'd like to um, highlight or maybe um, declare here that I am not an expert in MOOC, um, I, I just happen to be um, a person who actually developed MOOC. And that's the reason why in my slide, sorry, my slide before this, I said from the perspective of a developer. Um, so um, what I'm, I'll be sharing to you will be how I developed the two MOOCs uh, apart from what MOOC is and why do we need the MOOC and all that. And that will be part three where, where I share the two MOOCs that I did. And, and, and final part is for, for all of us to discuss. But of course I put that in part four, but it doesn't mean that you cannot ask me any questions along the way. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to um, ask, okay? Right, uh, and I think people who have had entered my session when they were in the uh, training before this and the quits as well, um, they know that I will do a lot of activities. So um, one of this session will begin. Uh, can you all either scan, scan the uh, QR code, you will be able to get the, the, um, apa ni? the, the Mentimeter. If, if you're using your computer, you can actually um, write www.menti.com and they will ask you for the code. This is the code, 6113-2227. Are you able to see the, I'm not able to. Yeah, we already. Yes, Prof, we managed to okay. get into. Managed to get the Mentimeter. Okay. There. Brilliant, so can you, can you jawab? Can you answer the questions, please? Sure, sure.
okay can you like um have you all answered hang on a minute let me see well there are only six of you who have answered what happened to the rest there are there are about 30 something people in this group there are 37 participants okay minta ya jawab ya untuk ni kita tengok dia punya Okay, good. There are 11. Thank you for those who have done. Thank you very much. So we will wait for the rest to, um, to respond. Okay, 17. Mana lagi 20 orang ni? Uh, tolak I jadi 19 orang. Okay, hurry up. I need about five people uh, to respond and then we will continue. Okay, let's see how everybody, um, not everybody lah, uh, about 26 people have responded. Okay, are you able to see this? Yes, Prof, clear. Yes. Yeah, um, understandably, uh, the questions, I mean, the questions, the statement that that's there is, um, I know what MOOC is. Uh, and if you look at um, uh, this, the, the, the average of people who have responded, uh, that's not too bad because it's above the average, which is actually 2.4. So, um, meaning many of you know what MOOC is. Um, compared to those who do not. Um, I have developed a book before. Well, that's uh, understandably. Um, 
I think only a few it doesn't it doesn't 1.7 means some of you have developed a MOOC and some of you have not. I mean, most of you have not. I have attended a MOOC before 2.1. I have completed a MOOC that I enrolled before. That itu satu hal lah. Attended tu maksudnya hadir. Uh, completed tu maksudnya selesai sampai dapat sijil, sijil penyertaan tu. Uh, or the badges. Uh, that will be completed lah. So, um, uh, some of you have actually attended but not all um, have completed. Um, I have uh, an idea of how to develop a MOOC, uh, you don't really have an idea yet. Uh, and notice the, the as we go along, as people are actually um, submitting their responses, the average will, will differ. And just now, as I said, everybody seems to know what MOOC is. Kita dah betul-betul on the ngam-ngam average 2.5 people. I mean, 2.5 means... Uh, same number of people who don't know and same number of people of um, uh, who knows. Uh, I have an idea of how to develop a MOOC. Uh, it's also similar to have attended and completed. But the last two is the one that I am happy to see that it is beyond um, the average, which means um, that's one I want to develop MOOC. And the other one is I believe I can develop MOOC until its completion. I think um, when we are developing uh, something that is new, I think motivation uh, of wanting to develop and believing that you can develop something or, de or do something new is very important. Um, when I started um, doing my MOOC, I didn't know what MOOC was all about. I just bulldozed. Uh, uh, I will tell you more about the story. Uh, so you don't really need to know what MOOC is. Enough for you to know. You don't have to know the definition of what MOOC is as long as you understand what's the MOOC. What, what is the minimal concept of what MOOC is. Um, and, but then again, uh, based on, uh, and when I developed my MOOC, I didn't have the time to attend or complete a MOOC for that matter. Um, I am only able to um, do that after, every time when I complete, uh, when I don't have, hold any administrative position, then I can actually, uh, you know, dwell on, on those book uh, courses. So um, so like, it's not a big deal if you have not completed a MOOC, but of course, for to develop a good MOOC, it would be nice for you to look at good MOOCs, uh, enroll and, and, and see how they present, they present their ideas, how they present their instruction, their activities, to give you some idea about what you can do for your own MOOC. I think that, that is also um, crucial. Any questions about this so far? No? So silence means no? So far, no. We listen okay. first. What's me? Okay, sure. Right, so um, I don't want you to listen. Now I want you to, to find out in your own devices, using your own devices, um, what is MOOC? Google and tell me what is MOOC. I want to ask any um, questions. I want people to actually tell me what do they, what do they, what did they get from from the internet uh, when when pe when people define MOOC? What is MOOC? What is MOOC? What have you found? Uh, saya try jawab ya sebab saya memang oh, uh, Zaki jadi pendepan lain-lain ni gimana Cik Zaki uh, saya nak bagi orang lain jawab dulu bagi orang lain jawab dulu uh, ok ni dah ada masuk message tu Ah, uh, of course the study made available over the internet without charge to a very large number of people ok a massive open online course is a model for delivering learning content online to any person who wants to take a course with no limit on attendance yep any more it is an online learning prof, uh, cater massive audience, correct? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, know, I know what you mean. I have the same problem. My, my brain is faster than my fingers. Anyone else? So, so when you talk about uh, the M in MOOC, it's meant for massive. So massive here means?
what does massive means? Are you able to see this part one? What is MOOC? And I constantly need to check what you what you are able to see. What is it that you're able to see? What is MOOC part one? MOC massive open online course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's and the one so that on. I want you all to see. Correct. Okay, so MOOC is uh, as as mentioned by um, by Nurul Husna is the massive open online course. That's correct. And mass here means, I mean, massive here comes from the word mass, and the word mass means many. So it's beyond your students, your existing students in your classroom. So if you have got 30 students, um, anyone who's going, who's interested in your MOOC um, can be within a range of thousands, 300, 2000. It's not easy to get 1000. You have to become maybe Adiputra good to teach the MOOC. Then only people will actually go into the uh, MOOC to, um, to listen to you. But um, the point is, um, um, the more relevant your MOOC is to many people, so it, the more people will uh, want to join. That's that's what it means. That's a, that's the reason why um, MOOC that is uh, um, meant for learning development will have more people compared to academic courses via MOOC because academic uh, courses via MOOC um, only certain types of people will take those courses because they want to upgrade themselves. But if it's a uh, if it's an um, a, a lifelong learning uh, kind of MOOC. Um, uh, people maybe want to know, uh, want to take up your 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 uh, MOOC because they want to learn something new so that it will benefit them. You know, like for example, they want to learn how to uh, plant the harumanis, for example. Um, so they, they want to know exactly what to do, you know, how to go about doing it, what's the processes. So if you develop the MOOC about, you know, planting, you know, A++ harumani, so people will actually want to go and, and register into your classroom. So it's, it's uh, those kind of um, um, topics, you will tend to have many people joining in, uh, in your MOOC, whereas very academic, very specific and academic course titles will not entice many people to come in unless they really, really want to learn, um, you know, uh, of a good reason, lah, either to get a credit transfer for their program that they are taking, or they want to um, update themselves, as I mentioned just now. And it's open, um, and it's open to all. Uh, but then again, um, as, um, as you all wrote just now, that it, it is free without charge. Well, it depends. Some of the MOOC courses um, are actually uh, uh, having fee. So those are the kind of courses which, which is now called micro-credentials. But micro-credentials will be um, MOOC yang besar tu yang dikecil-kecil kan? That will, that's how it's called micro-credential. But for um, uh, MOOC courses, that's usually in um, Ivy League universities, there are some that they give free, but there are some that they will um, ask for the fee. So usually what they will do is they will stack it. That's why it's called stackable um, education. They stack it by giving you a teaser. That teaser is actually free. But if you want to know more, then you will have to, if you want to be specializing in that particular, uh, that particular uh, discipline or area um, uh, or topic, then uh, for the next uh, modules that you'll be taking uh, will be uh, chargeable. So there will be a fee. So it is, but it's, it's such a galit, you know, in, in, in all, in all uh, uh, circumstances, usually it is free. And some of it is open all year, which means you really, it's very self-directed. Uh, in nature, so the students can actually go through the pro program, they do the task, uh, even if there is a quiz, immediately after they submit, they will give you the, uh, the grading and all that, and uh, upon completing all the activities, they will get the certificate, so it's all automated, and that's why it's open all, all year, so that's, that's, that's um, one model. The other one is very time-based, and usually this time-based is because there are 
a certain time when um, the lecturers will uh, or the course uh, uh, instructor or convener will communicate with the students via forum or chats or uh, usually forums lah, uh, where they will um, you know have uh, interaction uh, with the students so that will be time based because it depends on when the courses are offered and usually when it's it's like that um, it will be the academic courses type of MOOC, but then some, uh, if uh, for the law, even for the lifelong learning kind of um, courses, if they want to have interaction, they also can be time based. Meaning, uh, within two weeks, ke, you can selesai can MOOC ni dalam tempo dua minggu or empat minggu or satu bulan or dua belas minggu and all that. Um, and of course, as everybody mentioned, it is online. Yeah, so uh, in order, so when you talk about online, so it requires accessibility. It requires um, people to, uh, or certain people, only certain people is, is um, able to, to do this. And those people are those who have access to internet and technology. If they don't have access to internet and technology, they will not be able to benefit from more. Um, the courses, um, the, the, the nomenclature of the courses, it could be, as I mentioned just now earlier, lifelong, it could be lifelong or general, like, um, and as I gave you the example of planting the harumanis, because you all are from Perlis, um, or it can be academic, academic courses, or it's a standalone, standalone meaning just like my module, that I'm like introduce or give motivation to people who wants to do the, the uh, MOOC, uh, that will be a standalone, uh, standalone, uh, satu saja. So standalone kind of uh, MOOC or modular. Modular will be there are three, three parts, three separate parts. So they've got they've got to complete all the three parts um, to complete the MOOC, and um, and there was also what we call the niche type of MOOC. So when we started in UUM um, back in twenty fifteen. Uh, we were concentrating on the niche MOOC um, because um, we wanted to make sure that um, we highlight our uh, best um, programs that um, also uh, are also considered as the niche of the university, which is management based. Uh, in the year in 2016, we uh, once we've completed the, the, the first phase, the second phase was um, to find other niche areas, and what uh, and then and in that phase, we started looking at Islamic business uh, management. Was it, is, yeah, something like that. It's Islamic business management from Islamic business school, because um, we have um, the experts in our in our university, and we wanted to make them known to uh, you know to 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 the public. Right, um, and according to, uh, this is according to the DEPAN. DEPAN is Dasar e Pembelajaran Negara. Uh, according to uh, their uh, interpretation of what MOOC is, uh, it is only called MOOC if at least five weeks, five weeks, you, you, minimum is five weeks for you to do, to do the, the, the project. If it's less than that, it could, can be now called micro-credential or uh, it's just a blended learning kind of um, training. So this is, this in order for it to be called MOOC, at least five weeks, minimum five weeks, covering two learning outcomes. And this is for the academic, yeah? academic types of course. The maximum, of course, is the full length of the course. Lah. So if it's undergraduate, it will be 14 weeks. If it's um, uh, postgraduate, in the case of University of Tara Malaysia, because we've got tri-semester, it is 12 weeks plus add-on another two weeks of independent learning. So it's 12 weeks of um, um, synchronous uh, um, activities with uh, a two, four, four, two weeks of uh, asynchronous. So the full length of the course is the, the length of the total MOOC being uh, offered. Um, again, this is also another, I'm not able to, uh, um, if you have any questions, I will see if, if you put it in the chat, but uh, I don't mind if you just unmute yourself and ask, yeah? So, um, in... Uh, Prof, in, sebelum yes, tu, yes. so, uh, boleh dikatakan MC, which is micro-credential, itself is a part of the MOOC. 
that's how but, I see it. Yeah, that's how I see it. If you can, yeah, kalau orang yang dah pernah buat move, nak buat masuk ke dalam show tu sekejap je. Sekarang ni the issue dia sekarang ialah uh, macam mana kita nak buat kita punya micro credential tu menarik. Ha, yang itu je. So micro credential, uh, just now you mentioned about, so like MOOC, they, 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 what you call, they put maybe five weeks uh, punya tempoh kan, to call Minimum. it as MOOC. Minimum. That's mean Minimum. for MC less than that lah. No, 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 not necessarily. Ada juga yang MC yang, yang, yang uh, tapi MC definitely kena bayar. It's not free. Oh. MC is bayar oh, uh, my previous understanding MC is free something like a short course uh, that more on the niche punya ni kan macam nak tanam harum manis tu that's uh, oh yang so, tu depends. you tahu tak kalau kalau dekat luar negara nak 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 bela rusa jenis apa-apa apa tu semua tu dimuk kan oh dimuk so, kan potential kan oh. ha, sebab Katalah kalau kita uh, apa connect pula dengan jabatan uh, jabatan haiwan kesihatan haiwan if there if there is any uh, and and those taking those um, um, little microdential or mo will get uh, certificates and that certificate allows them to pelihara certain certain exotic animals uh, um, that's why people yang siapa yang nak ke arah tu dia akan ambil lah kursus-kursus ni Oh. Um, so dia macam uh, all the courses offered there being governed by is there any agency like macam MQA apa semua uh, uh, kalau is academic courses ah uh, betul kalau is academic courses kena ikut MQA okey kalau dia bukan dia lifelong learning tak payahlah tak payah i mean lah. Uh, uh, nak buat apa sebab you nak ikut MQA kalau dia ada kena mengena dengan uh, apa ni uh, academic qualification bukan yang you nak hasilkan diploma or degree or you know there's no academic qualification hmm. then you don't really need the 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 quality uh, assurance lah okay. uh, uh, but but if you are using it as an executive um, uh, apa diploma ke diploma and all that uh, yang tu semua tu kena ikut MQA right. zaman dulu-dulu executive diploma tak payah MQA sekarang ni yang tu pun nak kena follow kena, kena hmm, so macam ni lah uh, Ips ni macam you uh, tadi prof mention about the UM started with the niche area Maybe go in the future. Maybe started with the niche area in Islamic studies and other Islamic course. Nak ajar orang baca Quran pas semua boleh lah. Boleh. Uh -uh. So the the share so, platform lah. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Especially if you have a uh, uh, kalau nak belajar baca Quran tu uh, uh, kalau dia sama je dengan siapa-siapa ustaz ustazah yang mengajar dekat rumah tu people will not go right. Uh, right. Hmm. But if there is a technique. There's a technique yang macam contoh yang bah dadi ke apa ke kan yang depa okay. tu kalau depa nak buat mu boleh. Alright. Hmm. Okay, tak apa. So far itu. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So um, as I mentioned just now, when you speak about massive, the massive means uh, your students too can be ramai lah. The the more and enticing your 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 topic or your title is the greater the number of um, the the participants unfortunately as i mentioned just now if it's academic academic types of courses not many people the layman would want do not want to contoh if i'm actually teaching human lifespan development too, still okay lagi kalau uh, i'm teaching social cultural theory and learning that's one of the courses that i'm now currently doing siapa dia nak ambil social cultural theory learning tu unless dia memang uh, seorang so, pelajar dalam education psychology yang nak ambil khusus tu untuk dia punya credit transfer dia tak nak ambil daripada universiti dia, dia nak ambil daripada universiti-universiti lain uh, sebab kemungkin ada kepakaran di universiti lain yang dia rasa macam uh, apa ni dia nak dia nak ambil and all that uh, so dia akan dia akan um, buat khusus-khusus uh, tersebut dan minta credit transfer di universiti dia boleh so that's 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 what it means by uh, massive lah so open registration it's open it's open um, tapi open dia ada ada tengok jugaklah dia punya dia punya model sama ada open throughout the year or is it specific time uh, it can be local cohorts it can be global cohorts self paced is definitely memang tadi somebody said about self paced uh, what was it somebody said about self paced uh, prof, saya ada soalan, Prof.
Ya, Cik Azrul. Uh, untuk bangunkan AOMC, uh, MOOC ni, adakah um, tadi sebab Prof ada ada mention tentang expertise daripada universiti lain kalau nak minta transfer kredit. Adakah dalam proses nak bangunkan MOOC ni, kita kena jadi SME ataupun expert dalam satu-satu topik dulu Prof? Uh, bukan, maksud saya sebagai seorang pelajar Uh, uh, apa ni uh, Kementerian Pen Pen uh, Pendidikan Tinggi dah memberi leeway flexibility kepada pelajar tersebut untuk mengikuti mana-mana khusus MOOC uh, saya tak ingat dah dia punya percentage saya rasa macam 30% kot 30% of your total katalah saya enroll sebagai pelajar di UM tapi 30% leeway for me to take other courses offered by a MOOC from other countries or other universities You understand? So I take the MOOC, complete the course, get the get the grades, then I ask for credit transfer in UUM. As a student, I'm talking about as a student. Uh, Cik Astro, uh, faham tak? Uh, clear, Prof. Clear. Uh, jadi, dia nampak uh, konsep dia. Uh, jadi maksudnya, kalau kita ada uh, dalam kita punya universiti tu ada dia punya kepakaran dalam sistem bidang yang itulah yang sepatutnya kita guna dia sebagai um, orang yang akan menghasilkan MOOC untuk orang belajar daripada dia. Jadi people don't have to come don't have to go all the way to Perlis, people from from all over the country pun can come and can learn um, from from somebody who's actually from Kuwait. Clear ya? So if it's academic, if it's a court, if it's an academic course, uh, you can clear lah yang MQA punya regulation tu mesti kena ada. Kena ikut MQA punya guidelines when you're developing the MOOC tu lah. The college credits. And dalam MOOC ni pula dia sama je. Dia punya dia punya ciri-ciri MOOC tu dengan micro credential sama. Dia semua ada badges. They will have the badges that um, let's just say if you have, you know, some some people actually do one MOOC program. The whole program tu uh, apa ni MOOC, tapi yang itu ada fee sebenarnya dia bukan free. So dia pun what they, what they do is well, um, the first first course yang dia ambil dah dapat satu batch. So students akan kutip batch lah untuk dia nak dapatkan uh, dia punya uh, apa um, uh, nak mengiyakan meng kata dia dah selesai uh, meng, apa ni uh, mengikuti prog program tersebut. Okay, so So in a in a uh, in a nutshell, um, uh, this is this is what MOOC is, yeah. And um, it is part of the e-depan, uh, e-depan, like, depan, depan ni as in dasar e pembelajaran negara lah. And I I know uh, das, this dasar e pembelajaran negara is going is undergoing um, uh, review. So they will have the 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 latest um, version. Uh, because once they have already this this uh, dasar e pembelajaran negara ni, uh, that's where everybody will have a new new guidelines, a uh, new way forward in order to um, to you know to have uh, to to get ready their institution towards uh, the e learning in your, um, uh, environment. Okay. So um, understanding MOOC is 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 crucial for you now. I mean, it's it's enough. Whatever that you have given me in the chat, whoever who has given me, thank you very much. And that is enough for you to understand what MOOC is all about. And and I think we have we are now ready for for the second part, which is actually why do we need to create this MOOC? Um, and I think uh, it goes without saying lah. Uh, actually, long time ago, kan, when I was when when we we started MOOC in 2015, it was really difficult to to get people on board because people cannot see why they need to change. Um, I think um, asking my colleagues who were still now the director uh, in the respective uh, UTLCs, they find it much easier, uh, a lot easier to convince people to do MOOC now because of the pandemic. So uh, that's one of the hikmah lah kot. Uh, the pandemic tu membawa uh, cahaya di sebalik uh, segala-galanya in terms of kenapa kita perlu berubah juga uh, ataupun mengambil kira perubahan uh, dalam dunia uh, digital. And and MOOC is one of the channels lah 
for people to actually um, gain access to education. Kalau tidak, we all, always expect people to come to the uh, to the institution. Yeah, people come to the institution, but not everyone can come to the institution. Um, but I know you will argue with me. Not everyone has the facilities of the computer and the network. But but uh, it's getting there. Uh, the pandemic has um, opened up eyes. You know, the government's eyes. I'm I'm sure. Um, to uh, and the university in, in the institutions of higher learning as well actually not in institutions of higher learning institutions of all uh, levels of learning um, how crucial uh, for us to uh, to ensure the infrastructure um, for technology and and accessibility to internet um, is given to every part of our country if we really really want to move our country uh, forward so that no one can be left behind lah. Uh, in the sense that they have access to uh, education, yeah. Even if they perlu duduk dekat dalam hutan mana pun, uh, internet access and and if they've got those devices, they have the internet access. Then they nothing can stop them from getting from getting a degree. Okay, so the global demands uh, under the UNESCO when we have the SDG, uh, one of the the, the thrust for. Um, is actually access to quality education, equality, and equity. So if you're talking about um, ensuring everyone becoming educated, uh, MOOC is one way. Lah. And that's the reason why it is free. Uh, and asalnya dia jadi free itu disebabkan kita nak educate people as much as possible. So that's why it's, 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 very, it's very wise for institution to figure out where is your khidmat masyarakat. Uh, nak pastikan masyarakat you tu menjadi masyarakat yang terpelajar uh, and where can you also uh, you know generate income so um, that is 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 the balance lah between between the, the what institution need to consider um, the other aspect that oh, the reason why we have to change is we have to make sure that our society our nation is ready for the 21st century skills in fact we should be getting ready for the 21st century skills and beyond, beyond 21st century. Um, and one of it is digital literacy. And I'm sure um, all of you who, have, who are familiar with MQF 2.0 um, realize that digital literacy is one of the uh, new learning cluster or soft skill that they have added compared to uh, the MQF 1.0. Although actually um, it is, transformed from the earlier version of um, lifelong learning and management. But, um, but digital literacy really requires someone who's understanding um, um, about the use of internet, the use of um, um, social media, and, 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 and now we are talking about metaverse and whatever. So all this um, requires I mean, not required. All these are the reasons why, all the more reason that we need to have MOOC so that our um, our um, lecturers, yeah, uh, our students uh, are on par um, with what uh, the skills that's required in, in, in the real world setting. Um, also, lifelong learning initiatives uh, to increase the competence for competence. Uh, competence for competence, maksudnya, kita nak orang yang betul-betul mempunyai kecekapan untuk kecekapan, untuk menjadi cekap. Kecekapan untuk menjadi cekap, basically, lah, dalam bahasa Melayunya. Right, and that is the global demands. The national demands, <coughs> as I mentioned just now, is the dasar e pembelajaran negara, lah, which is in the process of updating because because of the pandemic, the pandemic happened in 2020, right? Yeah, 2020. Uh, because of it happened in 2020, it has speed up the process. Um, people should uh, use 100% online, teaching online. It was supposed to be done in 2025. So now it's like 2020. So they have to re revamp the, the Dasa Ipun Laja Negara in order to make sure that it is uh, current and relevant. Uh, and of course, when you talk about the Malaysian Education Blueprint for Higher Education, which all institutions of higher learning must um, also abide, 
uh, is the ninth thrust, which is globalized online learning. And it was because of this ninth thrust in the Malaysian Education Blueprint for Higher Education that MOOC became um, a strategy beginning 2015 uh, uh, or drive or initiatives by the Ministry of Higher Education then uh, in 2015. Um, because of the ninth, the ninth thrust in Malaysian Education Blueprint for Higher Education, which is on globalized online learning. And now, you, uh, as uh, Zaki mentioned just now, it is also even uh, M2A supported. So if you refer to the M2A guideline, you will be able to know how to develop your MOOC even better. And of course, the stakeholders' demands, lah, the students, the colleagues, the management, the society, and even the industry. And what do I mean by competence for competence? Uh, the development capacity to interactively mobilize and ethically use information, data, knowledge, skills, values, attitudes, and technology to engage effectively and act across diverse 21st century contexts to attain individual, collective, and global good. So that it, what it means is that you, uh, you are educating people uh, and so that they become competent, that they know where to get those information in order to upgrade themselves. And it requires critical... Uh, thinking it requires uh, independent learning uh, for them to be able to become uh, independent and for them to be able to become adaptable uh, and agile to change and also and also resilience and these are the uh, the framework for future competence uh, so it's, it's not far from our learning cluster, which, which has lifelong learning, um, self-agency. Uh, this self-agency is the most important lah, because when you are talking about uh, MOOC, it is very self-directed. Um, uh, someone, the, I mean, the reason why, if I were to ask you for people who have actually um, enrolled in a MOOC, but they did not complete, can you share your experience? Why, why is that so? Uh, for those who have uh, answered just now the survey, you said that you've actually attempted to to enroll into a MOOC, but you did not finish. <clears throat> and some of you were able to finish. Can can people who do, did not able to finish speak first? Anyone? Or write in the chat. Semua tak ngaku dah. Tadi siapa yang cakap uh, pernah mengikuti uh, apa khusus MOOC dan selesai? It was 2.4, I think. It was below the average, meaning uh, some of you, a very small portion uh, finish, but many did not finish. Tak ada? Kenapa you rasa orang susah nak habiskan MOOC tu? sebab dia lah uh, kata nak belajar kendiri ni uh -huh. sendiri ni nak uh -huh. cari timing sendiri macam tu lah kita uh -huh. punya konsep ni ketuk baru jalan lah macam tu lah thank you Cik Zaki you, I think you 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 give the right concept uh, that is uh, the Malaysian context Malaysian -nya punya cara and if we continue to have like that uh, susah lah untuk kita nak maju kalau kita nak ketuk baru nak jalan so apa yang kita perlu ada adalah inisiatif, motivation, endurance, grit, resilience, responsibility, uh, um, self-management, you know. So uh, if you have all these qualities apart from the other qualities that's there, um, that will help you to become, to become uh, regulated, self-regulated, uh, to complete the MOOC, to complete what you have started. But when we are designing the MOOC, we cannot only design the MOOC for individual learning. We also must design the MOOC so that there is collaboration, there is teamwork, um, you know, uh, there is negotiation. Uh, those, those kind of skills also um, are being um, used because to prepare them for the 21st century, for competence, for competence, you need interacting. You, you need people who are able to interact with each, with, with each other with each other. And I think those who have children, uh, what will be your concern now when you look at um, youngsters and, and children? What will be your concern? Apa yang rasa macam bila tengok anak-anak muda sekarang ni, kita rasa macam risau sangat. Apa yang kita risau? Anyone? 
Anybody? So you all dah tidur dah dekat dalam ni eh. Future job. Ah, betul. Future job. Ya. Yeah. Kenapa kita rasa macam susah untuk mereka nak dapat future job tu? Apa yang menyebabkan mereka tak boleh nak dapat pekerjaan tu? Competition. Competition. Okay. Okay kalau competition, kenapa dia tak boleh nak dapat? Kalau you are average tu rasa tak dipandang lah by you punya employer something like that something that means you have to ni ada something with the head daripada average punya ni lah. Cik Zaki, do you know how many people yang dapat 3.5 and above and still tak dapat kerja? Ya yeah, memang hmm. ada. Even PhD pun still yeah, yeah. ni. Yeah yeah. So it's got nothing to do with your with your with your qualification. Actually. Your qualification is just like syarat untuk masuk pertandingan. Untuk nak menang atau tidak, it's not that. What is it? Alia is correct, lack of skills. But what skills, Alia? What are we talking about here? Which skill that, uh, that, that is lacking, that is actually making uh, people uh, skeptical nak ambil you kerja ke kat dalam, dalam, dalam dia punya industry or company or corporate sectors? Prof ataupun uh, confident level, brilliant, uh, uh, experience maybe. Yep, yes, Alia, spot on. Um, thank you for. I tak tak sempat nak tengok nama tadi. Uh, Nurul, Nurul Anurul. Pak Iza. Okay, thank you very much for um for that for that. Yes, uh, self confidence is definitely. Uh, Malaysians have problem with self confidence, and that's why we need to increase this, their self confidence so that they can they can bulldoze and just do it. But the most critical skill yang uh, apa ni, we are facing right now is the communication skills. Most of our students or children now are glued to the, to the gadgets. They hardly speak to people. So if we do not design our lessons to allow them to have a go at communicating and negotiating and um, you know, debating with other people about their ideas, That's why they become very, uh, macam kata, macam, macam blur. Ha, dia tak boleh nak cakap, uh, nak tak boleh nak nak bagi pandangan, tak kot nak bagi pandangan sebab dia tak biasa, tak membiasakan diri dia untuk nak bagi pandangan. So that's why all this must be embedded in um, in your uh, program lah. Yeah. And when we are when we are developing our um, MOOC. Uh, that to me there are three three phases or what i call the three d's the first phase which is actually the development the second is actually to deliver once you have developed you can deliver the third is discharge maksud saya discharge ni bukan nak depa nak bagi masuk hospital tak uh, discharge ni maksudnya you berjaya untuk uh, pastikan semua pelajar you tu selesai dia dia, sel dia dia complete dia tidak dia tidak lari atau missing in action tengah jalan uh, you know they are able to complete it so uh, so in the first phase which is actually the development what do you, what do you do nah, development ni lah yang kita nak kena tengok apa CLO kita uh, apa bahan-bahan yang kita ada what is our CLO what is our our materials that we have what is what are the activities that we need to 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 plan so it requires a lot of planning it requires a lot of designing and the more heads are better than one but if you think that uh, depending lah when i was doing my mooc uh, people are also struggling to understand what the mooc is and i didn't have time to actually uh, communicate with other people so uh, in the end i had to do it on my own but i encourage uh, people to work um, as a group is somebody trying to ask me question or ada siapa-siapa nak tanya soalan ke tak kot tak ya okey um uh, so jadi you you, you kena uh, you itulah this the, the first phase which is actually the development phase is where you uh, you you Uh, kumpulkan bahan-bahan you, uh, plan and design your activities and all this, yang bahan-bahan tu pun mesti kena relevant dan activity tu mesti kena align dengan course learning outcome. Oh, I forgot. Not only the activities but also the assessment. So dalam development tu sekali kan dengan dengan uh, assessment. Uh, delivering ialah apabila dah selesai, 
uh, then we go to the delivering. What UUM does is uh, upon completion of our uh, of the um, of the MOOC development, we will have to uh, all the MOOC uh, courses yang yang dah developed to will have to go through uh, audit processes where a quality assurance lah. So kita akan ada jatuhan kuasa quality MOOC uh, untuk meneliti uh, bahan uh, copyright semua semua tu lah. Uh, dia punya um, sebab copyright tu you kena jaga kalau uh, kita ambil daripada tempat lain kalau kita tak kalau dia tak release dia punya copyright and all that kita kalau dia tak benarkan kita tak boleh masukkan dalam MOOC kita nanti kita akan kena kena sue pula tak pasal-pasal so all this we have to take into consideration unless it's an academic yang yang tidak berbayar uh, then they will not uh, be bothered sangat selalunya orang tak kisah tapi kalau kita mendapat uh, fee daripada daripada uh, MOOC tersebut uh, pastikan bahan-bahan dia adalah bahan-bahan asli lah bahan-bahan kita sendiri. Okay, once we have completed that and we've gone through the the, the and we are ready lah basically nak ready to to launch. Once kita dah launch, the next is for us as instructor is actually to deliver. So that's where we have to uh, do the preparation lah to de to, de to deliver the MOOC like whether it is an open all year around or is it certain period of time. And kalau if it's certain period of time, you must make sure that you're constantly there um, um, to monitor uh, because if they ask you questions, um, you have to respond. Lah. Um, I did not refer to any books, but I made myself, when I, once I've already completed my MOOC, then I had to go and deliver it because I, I was teaching those two courses. Um, my rule was I have to give the response to the students um, question in the forum 48 at least minimum 48 hours 48 hours from the time yang dia um, hantar eh bukan minimum yang tu maximum 48 hours maksudnya within the 48 hours I kena hantar the response so um, using the open learning uh, memang dia dia selalu nanti ada macam um, bell lah to tell us that um, ada orang dah tanya soalan dekat dalam uh, 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 dah tanya dalam forum and all that so kita tahu lah dia hantar pada email kita kita tahu bila kita nak kena uh, respond pada pelajar itu uh, sebab you kena faham eh uh, kalau you tanya dekat I um, yang mana lebih mudah uh, mengajar MOOC tu dia lebih mencabar sebab uh, setiap pelajar kita kan tadi kita dah kata they can learn this at their own time and uh, it's flexible so at their own time some people are nocturnal some people uh they they do well they do they can function better when it's in the morning some people in the afternoon and some people wait at night so you dah tidur dah uh, dan dia masa tu lah nak tengok semua apa bahan-bahan dan mula bila dia dah tengok of course dia akan ada uh, soalan dan dia akan tanya soalan pada pukul 3 pagi contohnya jadi kita kita dah tidur so that's why um, uh, that is the only mencabar sebab kalau dalam kelas kita uh, kita punya kelas tu within that one or two hours or three hours or one and a half hours habis kat situ habislah kalau dia nak tanya pun mungkinlah dia akan hantar tanya melalui whatsapp ke apa ke but point is uh, the nature of our um, delivery tu will be different um, and that's why uh, we have to uh, consider lah um, all the, the the kind of interaction that you will have and once you have completed the delivery for doesn't matter whether it's five weeks or 12 weeks according to what you have designed next is actually to ensure that there is discharge meaning uh, your students have actually completed that there is a doing of an action the doing of an action maksudnya your students actually did all the requirements participants completed activities and requirements for accomplishment and you can actually see that you can actually uh, um, get data analytics uh, from their whatever that they have seen and all that and it can be derived from the execution and the implementation so that means then you have discharged your MOOC very well yeah, jangan uh, tengah-tengah jalan tak, tak ramai orang so far so good any questions here silence means no um, so far so good so far so good okay um, so I'm going just going to uh, continue to part three now so I'll be sharing to you how I developed the two MOOC courses that I mentioned just now. The, they are both postgraduate courses because I think uh, since 20, 
since 2012, I've been teaching uh, postgraduate. I don't know, there was a time in, in 2018 that I taught undergraduate. But during this time that, that I developed my MOOC, um, I was actually teaching the postgraduate courses. Okay, these are, uh, so because I wanted to use it for my students, that there are not many because it's postgraduate, kan? Kalau postgraduate ni tak adalah lebih daripada 15. Uh, in fact, uh, masa tu ada yang, uh, apa, yang uh, kurang 10 pun ada human lifespan tu. Uh, understanding learners ni, uh, is different. Uh, yang ini uh, ramai lah juga, tapi tak lah. Again, not not more than fifty. It was less than fifty. So there are two programs. One is the Masters in Education, Education Psychology, uh, for the course SGDY five zero one three, which is Human Lifespan Development. Um, I started doing this in twenty fifteen. Uh, the reason why I started this 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 um, MOOC was because I was the director of UTLC then. And I thought that in order for me to influence people and to ensure that the university can, can have um, a better footage to embark into MOOC, I need to know what, what is in store. I need to know apa dia masalahnya kalau kita nak buat MOOC, apa, apa yang nak kena, apa dia cabaran-cabarannya uh, supaya I boleh jadi orang uh, orang tengah lah untuk nak uh, bincang dengan pihak pihak pengurusan uh, dan juga menyediakan um, mungkin nak bincang tentang insentif-insentif yang diberikan kepada kepada um, pembangun MOOC and also dari situlah kita boleh menggalakkan lagi ramai orang yang boleh membuat MOOC macam setengah universiti like UKM um, MOOC mereka adalah syarat untuk kenaikan pangkat Kalau dia nak naik pangkat, dia kena ada satu MOOC. Tak kira lah dia naik pangkat daripada pensyarah, daripada pensyarah kanan, pensyarah kanan kepada Profesor Madia, Profesor Madia kepada Profesor. Itu di UKM. Di UUM so far tak ada lagi lah. Uh, apa ni. Uh, tapi itulah maksudnya. Uh, apa ni? Uh, the drive from the institution will also drive the development of the MOOC lah. Okay. So um, as written there, I was the director of UTLC and the university was first embarking in MOOC development. Um, I, as the director, didn't know what MOOC was uh, and I had to uh, read up, uh, find out, understand uh, what it is. And from there, um, uh, I wanted to know how to support lah, the MOOC developers uh, among the faculty members uh, and, and of course to help the university achieve its KPI. What When I say the university achieve its KPI, because the KPI was given to us by the Ministry of Higher Education. Um, at, in 2015, uh, uh, our university, we were supposed to develop six, six MOOCs in 2015. And, and none of us uh, in, in the U2LC understand what MOOC was. Well, we were also um, reading out the um, Malaysian Education Blueprint, la, the PAN, la, semua tu tengah baca-baca and all that. We go for our training. I went for the training. My, my deputy director also went for the uh, training. My staff went to the training. And we had uh, our greatest challenge was the fact that I had only one uh, IT developer. He's not actually an IT developer. We call him uh, instructional designer. Tapi tak ada, dia tak ada post instructional designer. He's actually an IT, uh, IT person. Lah. Uh, but he he was roped in into uh, thank God by the previous director in 2014 uh, because the 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 harder dah uh, ura ura uh, untuk nak nak start mood maksudnya bila saya masuk tu mood tu kena ada dah uh, not, uh, the idea of mood tu was done maybe in 2012 20, 2014 when I wasn't the director so I macam tak ambil kisah lah kan uh, so when when I was the director I had to ambil kisah I had to know and because of that I had to do it in order for me to know what and how I can support my staff. And it wasn't easy for me to, to finish the MOOC because I was the director of the Teaching Learning Center. And it's not easy when you're holding a position where you have meetings over meetings and all, and all sorts of things that we have to do. So it took me two years to complete the MOOC. Uh, basically, I started in 2015. I completed my MOOC in 2017. And that was the period of me becoming the director. Habis, habis pun ngam-ngam je. Uh, habis, and I pun turun sebagai uh, uh, director. 
Um, and how did I design that, that particular uh, human lifespan ni? I de designed it in a weekly format. Weekly format tu maksudnya dia ada week 1, week 2 sampai 12. Uh, dia 12 minggu. So week 1 until week 12. That's how I designed my, my MOOC. So basically my MOOC was basically almost the same as my LMS, my uh, learning management system, which is called UM Online. Uh, cumanya dia lagi, lagi interactive lah. Uh, compared to the learning, uh, the UM online learning. Sebab pada ketika tu, UM online learning tu tidak berapa interaktif. Uh, but when we did the MOOC, then we secara sekali harung, kita perbetulkan uh, the learning management system. Sebab masa tu, bukan semua orang akan buat MOOC, tapi apa yang baik dalam uh, features-features yang baik dekat dalam uh, open learning platform tu, kita masukkan dekat dalam uh, UM online. Okay. Okay. Uh, the when i stepped down uh, actually when i wanted to rehat in 2017 and i i pleaded my vice chancellor and thank god he says okay although he was mad at me um to step down uh, in 2018 because i wanted to i i, have, I wanted to co concentrate on my scholarly work and that's when um i had a lot of time and I dah, dah, orang kata dapat uh, gian kot, dah habis dah, uh, I've just completed my first book. And then tiba-tiba saya dimaklumkan, I have to teach this new program, which is called Postgraduate uh, Diploma for Higher Education Learning and Teaching. This program is a postgraduate diploma for in, uh, uh, instructors in higher learning, which means uh, kui punya, punya instructors pun boleh ambil postgraduate diploma for higher education learning teaching. So one of the courses uh, under this particular program was Understanding Learners, uh, SGH E5053. And I was in charge of that uh, course. Um, and I, uh, this time, the reason pula untuk uh, I buat MOOC tu kerana, uh, this particular program was initially, uh, actually they developed untuk semua institution of higher learning. Tapi for our UUM new recruit uh, lecturers, uh, or academic staff, they have to take uh, uh, the they have to enroll themselves in the program uh, as part of their confirmation. So, um, so my my reason for doing my second MOOC is not the same as my my first MOOC because all of them are lecturers in UUM. Jadi kalau saya nak guna LMS uh, uh, UUM online pada ketika tu, uh, saya ada masalah sebab when all of them registered, <coughs> kisahnya ada 38 orang, campur dengan saya ada 30, 39 orang instructor. Sebab dia ID, dia 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 email, is uh, uh, the, the email uh, ID email mereka tu dah memang dah digazetkan sebagai ID email instructor. Jadi kalau, kalau mereka masuk, walaupun mereka masuk sebagai pelajar dalam saya punya LMS, uh, their role still remain as instructor because of their ID. So I had to search for another another platform where I can actually um, teach them. The reason why I had to use the platform is because this postgraduate diploma for higher education learning teaching is designed to become 80% online and 20% face-to-face. So three times for us to, to meet face-to-face, -face, the rest they have to do to do online. So it was okay to use the LMS if all of them can be registered as a student. Unfortunately, they can't. So that's the reason why um, I suddenly thought, hey, kenapa tak buat, uh, tak guna uh, open learning ni? Sebab kita boleh register je mereka ni, tak kisahlah walaupun mereka pakai universiti punya punya email ke apa ke, uh, they are still going to, uh, I mean, in that open learning uh, punya platform, uh, kita boleh uh, apa ni, designate kan yang mana instructor, yang mana uh, apa uh, students. Uh, jadi oleh kerana itulah uh, uh, berkobar-kobar lah I menyiapkan I punya uh, second MOOC tu tapi kali ni dalam tempoh tiga bulan. Tadi tu dua tahun, yang ni tiga bulan. Because I'm, I was able to concentrate. All I need to do was just to have my materials, think about my activities, start thinking about the assessment, and I put them in on a weekly basis. Uh, sorry, not weekly, modular basis. Modular basis maksudnya saya ada empat LO. Jadi CLO yang pertama, modul pertama. CLO kedua, modul kedua. CLO ketiga, modul ketiga. CLO keempat, modul keempat. So uh, so I design based on the CLO all the activities and the assessment for CLO one. 
Habis je CLO1, next is CLO2. Macam tu lah dia punya dia, uh, how I design it. So it's, it's different than the um, human lifespan because that one was weekly. This one is modular. Maksudnya, they know that they have, by certain, certain week, they have to complete module one. By certain, certain week, they have to complete by module two. Certain, certain week, they have to complete by module three. And, and, and certain, certain week, they have to complete the final module. Okay. And also, uh, although I stepped down as the director of University Teaching Learning Center, then uh, my heart is always at, uh, with the University Teaching Learning Center. So I wanted to help the director because I knew it was difficult for, for me to get people to want to do um, the MOOC. So um, I thought, may as well I do one more MOOC and at least I can kill two birds with one stone. I can solve my problem with my students and at the same time, uh, you know, contribute to the university's KPI. So, how was my learning process when I was? Uh, I sorry, Prof. Nak tanya yeah. sikit. Yeah. Uh, in developing academic course uh, for the um, uh, MOOC ni, so there are the prasyarat that let's say macam the program must be FA ke fully uh, macam kena apa dapat full akreditasi dulu ke uh, uh, by MQA. Kami tak ada masalah tu sebab semua kena dah um, ada semua full. dah FA lah sekarang. Ya, yeah, semua dah 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 uh, dah FA sebelum dia Oh, okay okay, maybe lah, maybe you're right. Uh, for this one definitely dah dah dapat akreditasi. Understanding learners at that time when I was doing the the program belum lagi. Uh, but by the time uh, we've completed the dah kat kat habis dah we we receive our fa dia dia dah dia, dia panggil apa eh dulu uh, yang bukan fa sebelum tu dia panggil apa uh, dia macam tempoh te, you, you akan ada tempoh satu tahun kan yang you boleh offer the program but within that one year you have to have the fa pa partial accreditation ah uh, okay yeah well that makes sense yeah, PE. I forgot the terminologies. So yeah, um, so uh, when I did design it in 2018, we were in that in that stage where um, we have to settle the. Uh, I mean, we have kita dah siap dah, dah hantar dah kepada MQA, tinggal nak dapatkan dia punya full accreditation. That will be, uh, dalam proses one year tu lah. Okay, good good question. So coming back to this, how was my learning process when developing the MOOC? Um, when I was the director, I did join all the MOOC training because the MOOC training was actually given and 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 coordinated uh, uh, via the MAPTA. MAPTA tu is the Majlis e uh, e pembelajaran IPTA. Um, so MAPTA MAPTA ni lah yang yang uh, bantu untuk nak sediakan training. Uh, jadi dia akan hantar semua semua orang uh, untuk hadir. So I went for that training uh, uh, and also we sent a few people uh, as our uh, trainer so they 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 pun balik they pun akan jadi uh, trainer untuk uh, apa ni uh, untuk university so um, yang untuk trainer tu i didn't go lah because i don't have the time yang tu trainer tu dia they had to go through series of training in order for to to be certified as the as a MOOC trainer uh, so there, there were two of us, uh, two of them, my deputy director at that time, uh, and uh, my the, the remember I told you about that one star, uh, that that <coughs> technical uh, technical support who actually went for the for the training. And basically, that training, dia bukanlah untuk nak uh, apa sangat. Dia macam macam mana nak guna the open online. Uh, Oh, sorry, open learning punya platform tu. Sebab pada ketika 2015 hingga 2017, um, KPT, Malaysian Higher Education, uh, dah uh, apa, uh, macam bekerjasama dengan open learning uh, uh, through their, their smart partnership. So semua IPTA mesti kena guna apa ni, open learning. Kecuali kalau memang IPTA tak nak buat MOOC lah. Uh, so those yang buat uh, MOOC, they have to use the open learning punya punya platform. Jadi sebab itulah dia orang uh, ambil untuk nak hantar, minta kita hantar uh, trainer tu supaya dia ditrainkan. So when these people come back, uh, I went for the the training session too. Uh, not as the director, but as someone who's actually developing the MOOC. Uh, and um, 
also I had to make sure that I understand the requirements. Maksudnya, um, what are the what are the um, uh, quality uh, we have the quality evaluation so we need to understand what are the requirements all this uh, we got it we 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 uh, developed that based on our readings and and our review of uh, past literature and, and and experts and it's very important to begin with the end in mind maksudnya you kena uh, nampak secara keseluruhan daripada assessment sampai ke delivery sampai apa yang dimaksudkan sebagai apa ni the whole course itulah so um, and of course uh, joining all these workshops helps me to become uh, a developer lah. Uh, but what what uh, the whole process is as i mentioned just now uh, first plan the lessons and then develop and complete the content and activities and assessment siap sahaja mooc tu uh, to submit to the mooc quality evaluation uh, committee for their for their endorsement and their feedback for their review so bila depa review kena perbetulkan so kita akan perbetulkan uh, then baru kita boleh gunalah so then uh, uh, yalah then can begin the process lah where you can think you plan you make sense of what needs to be done so basically you kena fikirkan um, apa uh, bertonggakkan you punya CLO hasil pembelajaran you kalau if it's an academic course uh, bertonggakkan kepada CLO dia um, apa dia punya aktiviti-aktiviti uh, yang bersesuaian, yang selari, yang sejajar dan apakah assessment yang sejajar yang sebenarnya uh, melihat sejauh mana pelajar dapat mencapai CLO tadi. So sama sahaja macam kita design any any types of education, you have to make sure that you understand the intended learning outcomes and the skills involved because your course will be related to certain skills. So you will need to make sure that all that is taken into consideration. The next is for you to develop, uh, to start thinking about how to activate the verbs in the course learning outcome. Contoh, kalau intended learning outcome dia ialah, ataupun course learning outcome dia ialah apply. So the activity mesti kena activity yang membenarkan atau memberi peluang kepada pelajar untuk apply. So activating the verbs in the course learning outcomes when teaching as well as assessing. And activity yang banyak yang you bagi itu sebenarnya adalah juga uh, peluang untuk pelajar mendapat formative assessment. Maksudnya formative feedback daripada you supaya dia dapat buat penambahbaikan before dia, dia buat summative uh, assessment. And of course, it has to be attainable. Attainable here means ensuring that the delivery and assessment activities or tasks are meaningful and engaging for learning to take place. Maksudnya boleh diterima oleh pelajar, pelajar memang rasa berminat untuk nak. Nak, nak, nak mengikutinya. Realistic uh, considerations not only whether realistically can be done but connected to the real world. Maksudnya walaupun kita minta pelajar tu buat kebanyakan masa dia belajar sendiri tetapi apa yang kita minta tu adalah connect kepada dunia dia sebagai siapa, whoever lah. Uh, apa, ataupun di, uh, um, in my case when I'm teaching human lifespan tu, most of my students are actually teachers so I connect the the situations to them as teachers. And for the PGDHLT too, because they are all instructors in the university. So I ask them to connect whatever that they were learning to, to the context of them as instructors in the university, while also considering their context as learners in my classroom. So um, that's how they make sense. Uh, uh, that's what I mean by real, uh, realistic. Lah. Okay. And finally, time based, it can be done in a specific time. So, yeah, jangan over, jangan over sangat lah. But you can ingat juga dia punya SLP, kan? Based on the consideration of individual differences juga, whether they need feedback or not, whether they they need uh, guidance or not. So, um, yeah, those are the things. Right. Uh, when you're talking about designing instruction for virtual context, uh, number one, you have to identify the learning outcomes, as I mentioned just now. So, you have to look at your syllabus and scheme of work. Take note of the learning outcomes, uh, including the soft skills, learning domain or clusters. So as I mentioned just now, when I, uh, the minute I know what my CLO is, what soft skills are related to the course and to that particular course learning outcome, then I started looking at the topics that are related. And from there, um, I create the uh, activities. And itulah, think of interesting alternative ways to deliver and assess. <clears throat> so be creative and never forget the learning outcome. So um, I was doing lots of Okay lah, cubalah. Uh, yeah. uh, suruh dia orang buat survey lah. Dia pun buat survey dulu. Tengok diri dia pun macam mana. Lepas tu baru dia pun tengok pada pelajar mereka pula. 
uh, tengok apa perubahan daripada pelajar mereka. You know, those are the things, those are the kind of activities that I had to do for the understanding learners. The key word is meaningful uh, and being relevant. And um, and relevance to learn here means because all of these people are adult learners, they need to see being an adult learner, you need to, uh, adult learners ni dia, dia belajar apabila dia, dia nampak relevance, dia nampak sebab dia nak belajar. Uh, baru dia akan menumpukan uh, perhatian lah. So that's how you have to think about activities yang make sense and make meaning and and it's relevant to their context. Uh, then they will they will be interested to continue uh, doing it. Uh, think of the most disadvantage because to consider not only the context in which the students are in but the prior knowledge and learning approaches that make up the individual differences. Maksudnya what, what prior knowledge do they have? Um, and that's how uh, you kind of design it supaya dia taklah senang sangat dan tidaklah susah sangat it's like on par and for those yang masih uh, perlu bantuan ke apa-apa uh, you akan ada beberapa activity yang if you still have not got this you can do this try this so they 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 have a, a place where they can they can develop their skills and and then join you know uh, uh, the actual skills that, uh, the tasks that they need to do Think of the instruction, the virtual, kalau dia dalam virtual context and it's online, so it requires instructors to design the instruction for students' interaction. Maksudnya, bila you cakap, bila you menulis instruction dekat dalam online, seolah-olah so seperti you sedang bercakap dengan pelajar you. You know, like, now that you have done, uh, you kena cakap, nak, kalau you, you, you tulis macam biasa tu, uh, dia akan ada rasa gap between uh, what they're doing and, and you know, uh, they feel aloof lah, they feel alienated. Learning engagement is a bit tricky, especially when you do not see the learners, which is sekarang ni, or worse, if you're teaching a large class. That's why activities still play a very important role. So when you have the activities, when you design the activities to be there, uh, it's a lot easier for, <clears throat> for you to monitor who is actually having problem to, to be on, on, on the track or who is sidetracked. Um, you know, so you you will know how to give it the the, the kind of um, support the, the, uh, to facilitate their learning. Begin with the end in mind. So before you design your lesson, regardless whether it's face to face or online, ke, you have to imagine what your students are doing and your expectation of what they will gain out of the lesson. Apa sebenarnya you nak nak dia dapat dari pelajaran uh, pengajaran dia, ataupun kursus tu. So then work as best as you can to realize your imagination. So you can imagine you nak pelajar you boleh buat apa. Uh, dari situ lah, okay, kalau I nak dapat pelajar I untuk buat yang tu, I kena buat apa dulu, apa yang I can, aktiviti apa yang I boleh buat supaya pelajar, boleh men, uh, pelajar, pelajar tu boleh uh, apa ni, menunjukkan tingkah laku yang boleh menampakkan kemenjadian uh, berdasarkan kepada apa yang saya imagine tadi. And finally, assurance of learning. So collecting evidence, betul yang kata tadi, uh, discharge tadi tu important. Collecting evidence that learning is achieved, also important is reflecting your own practices for continuous improvement in quality of instructional design delivery. Uh, meaning, if you did not achieve what you had in mind, how can you improve your lesson? Um, the, the, the problem uh, with me is, after I design my MOOC tu, lepas tu macam tak, tak mengajar dah khusus-khusus tu. Kecuali sekali dua je selepas tu, um, I had to give to other people and because I was already receiving other courses to teach. <coughs> so, uh, bila kita pass pada orang lain dan orang lain tu tidak terlibat dalam pembangunan MOOC tu, tak semestinya dia akan meneruskan uh, menggunakan MOOC tu. Sebab MOOC tu, uh, the course was not declared as MOOC. The course was, was a, a normal course. So, kalau dia nak buat secara secara ikut seperti apa yang uh, dia nak buat you know whatever that they plan to do tak salah so it was uh, so in the end uh, dia jadi macam uh, sedih jugaklah uh, until when i became the dean i was able to actually put a apa a, a stronger uh, influence on the academic staff in order for those yang khusus dah memang dah develop pada MOOC memang kena menggunakan MOOC ni lah okay so these are the uh, the two MOOCs, uh, and it became my innovation. <clears throat> it was part of my innovation actually. Um, and <clears throat> and I say work smart for two MOOCs for two reasons. What I mean by two uh, work smart again, sekali je untuk I nak bubuh just the punya activity activity tu, and then after that I just need to improve the activities because the CLO selagi I tak buat curriculum review, the CLO remains. 
Um, I just need to, to change probably the way in which I assess my students, but basically the, the level of my assessment and the, the, the skills that, I, that is involved are all the same because the CLO is still there. So yang kena ubah ialah hanya aktiviti-aktiviti dan tambah uh, the resources. So it was really helpful sangat-sangat because it's there, you know, uh, and you can just improve on it. Uh, whereas if it's, uh, if it's not there, you, kita tak nampak benda tu. Rasa macam kita, every time yang kita mengajar, kita kena buat all over again. So this was um, very unique and, and a unique experience for me. Um, and, and I'm glad that I did the, the MOOC lah. So these are the two MOOCs and that's how the interface of uh, UUM MOOC is. Cuma sekarang ni, uh, ah, okay, this is uh, this is how uh, dalam MOOC ni lah, uh, uh, tadi apa, Encik Zaki kata, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to talk about open learning. I can't really talk about open learning because now I don't have access to open learning. Um, we, unfortunately, we, we are not able, sebab open learning pada ketika dulu, 2015-2017, it was free. So sekarang ni dah dia, dia dah minta untuk me, uh, membayar platform, which is understandable. But uh, because institutions of higher learning, LANI, especially UUM pun terbabit sama, um, have um, problems with uh, finance, financial in terms of budget cut and all that. So kita tak dapat nak meneruskan dengan open learning ni. But what, we, what UUM has done is actually to come up with our own uh, platform for uh, uh, for MOOC, and that's what uh, UTLC is currently doing. So when I was using open learning, this was how uh, it looks like lah. Uh, so this is learning and, and contoh yang saya kata first module tu, learners and learning in higher education, two module yang pertama. Uh, adalah like explanation of who the course instructor is and who the course, uh, apa ni, and the duration of the course, all the information semua tu adalah. Uh, yang ini adalah uh, example yang saya kata itulah. Uh, yang tadi yang tadi was learners and learning in higher education kan. Uh, lepas tu ada juga uh, tentang uh, apa ni educational uh, principles, psychological principles, learner engagement and motivation as well as engaging and supporting learners learning. Semua empat-empat title ni adalah modul yang setiap modul tu ada dia punya CLO yang sebenarnya CLO tu datang daripada kursus tu. So that, that's how I uh, design it. So every time when I design it, we will have the, the CLO lah. So this is the CLO for the for this particular module. Uh, jadi kita, kenapa saya letakkan uh, the, the CLO tu dekat situ supaya saya pun clear uh, apa pun activity ataupun assessment yang saya nak bagi mesti kena pastikan dia capai tahap kepada C2 ni. Uh, ability and our, my students are constantly discussing about um, you know the theories or the perspectives so banyaklah aktiviti-aktiviti yang kita buat uh, dalam dalam tu so this is one of the activities um, that i also designed um, at that time i was helping when i was the director of university teaching learning center before that i gave one talk on on how uh, to encourage student centered learning approaches so one of the participant was a colleague of mine uh, in the university from the Islamic Business School. So she was uh, intrigued by um, what, what was shared during that session. So she wanted to try student-centered learning and she went like really, tahu, dia tak pernah buat student-centered learning kepada yang continuum yang kehujung sekali, dia nak buat service learning. So, um, so she had she she asked me lah dia kata boleh tak uh, you jadi i punya critical friend and help me and see whether i'm doing it right uh, you know how i design my 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 lesson and all that so she did it very well in fact she you know to, like, sometimes i feel so blessed because i'm actually learning from her uh, in in the process of me helping helping her and uh, in the end i wanted to uh, interview the students um, I wanted to interview the students to find out how did they learn from her class because asalnya uh, these students don't like hmm, I shouldn't say this lah, but students avoid taking her class lah. basically that's what it means um, and avoid taking that particular course because khusus tu susah nak faham dia ada banyak sangat benda-benda uh, yang nak kena ingat and all that so everybody uh, avoid tapi uh, uh, bila dia orang buat curriculum review that particular course became a core course Khusus wajib, uh, teras program. Jadi pelajar-pelajar mesti kena ambil. 
uh, dan uh, apabila dia pun masuk kat dalam kelas tu uh, dah lah dia pun macam demotivated tak suka stress up and all that lepas tu bila tahu kata kena buat service learning yang dia pun dia tak pernah buat sepanjang hayat dia pun lagi lah uh, stress dia pun uh, meningkat um, until she did a lot of activities in the classroom to develop the skills before they actually see the community uh, and after that they pun pula next share you know uh, they pun pula rasa seponok sangat and they they want to continue So um, I interviewed the students. I interviewed the students to find out what was their learning experiences. Remember, my course was about understanding learners. So I wanted to ask the students from their perspective, how did they learn when she was doing all these things? And it turned out that all of them said uh, very positive words. In fact, these three uh, candidates were actually um, talking about Initially, they were the ones yang yang ni uh, adalah ketua 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 apa uh, cohort tu. Uh, dia sebenarnya yang macam <coughs> macam skeptical sangat sangat uh, uh, untuk mengikuti kursus tu. Sebab dia kata selama ni it's just lecture lecture lecture. So they were very comfortable with taking notes, going for the exam, getting their results. Suddenly nak kena buat service learning and lots and lots of student centered learning activities yang kena buat students buat macam-macam-macam tapi uh, what she said was I can see myself growing in terms of the skill and the skill that they were they were focusing on was the social and responsibility skills yang ni masa MQF 1.0 eh. uh, and this boy uh, and remember they, they come from the Islamic business school so the asalnya ialah boys all on one side and girls are all on one side they don't speak to each other But because they, this is a service learning, they need to go and speak to people, entah siapa-siapa yang proprietors of uh, the cafe. Um, before they can actually go to the community, they need to know how to learn to speak to strangers to each other. So they were also strangers to, to among themselves. So that's a good learning 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 ground. So they uh, so the boy said that this particular boy said that was dia dah tahun ketiga. But that's the first time yang dia duduk bercakap dalam kumpulan bersama dengan perempuan. And he felt very, and worst case, there was one time dia kata, uh, sebab what she, uh, the lecturer did was to to put them in in groups. She uses the wheel, wheel apa, uh, the the spinning wheel tu, untuk nak determine secara random siapa yang akan masuk kat dalam kumpulan mana. So kebetulan dalam kumpulan dia, dia ketua. Eh bukan dia ketua, dia menjadi ahli, uh, ahli dia tu semua perempuan So by default, dia pun suruh dia jadi ketua lah So dia kata dah lah dia susah nak bercakap dengan perempuan Dia nak jadi ketua kepada perempuan-perempuan Dia kata susahnya, ya Allah Tapi um, after a while, uh, because of the, the, the discussion to to complete the task Because they had to complete a, a lot of task and, and and all that to be done within a certain period of time So they didn't have, they were not concerned about their fear anymore they were not uh, concerned about they were concerned about completing the task so they were met, they are able to discuss with the with the with each other and the the interesting part which he said was uh, i find it uh, macam dia kata uh, the, the the girls think differently the way uh, i think and together we came up with very good uh, solutions to the problem So that's a very good um, uh, example of how students pick up skills um, uh, in when they are negotiating. Okay, this is the technical support, um, uh, uh, the course navigation. So that's that's how I will know uh, from this technical support nila yang the, the 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 learning analytics tool uh, that I will get. So dia dalam dalam open learning tu pun, asal dalam mana mana LMS pun kita boleh nampak dia punya learning analytics of students. Um, apa ni perform and uh, the punya lah seronok sangat uh, doing all this that um, we also uh, wrote um, Dr. Shabani is actually my deputy director who then became the director I appointed him as the director to ganti my place lah um, so both of us actually wrote about um, our Malaysian MOOC initiative uh, in the case of University Utara Malaysia And it's in this book, uh, The Impact of MOOCs on Distance Education in Malaysia and Beyond, written by, uh, no, sorry, not written, edited by Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Amin MB, and also Helmi Norman. And Muhammad Amin MB, Prof, uh, Datuk Prof um, Muhammad Amin, was actually um, initially in 2015, 
um, he was the pengarah for UKM uh, and he was the deputy deputy uh, uh, chairperson for MEPTA. The chairperson was um, Allah Yarham, uh, Professor Hanafi from USM. So, and, they, and together with Prof Hanafi, uh, Datu Prof Amin and uh, Prof Karim to a certain extent, they were the, the, the pioneer lah, uh, to help uh, uh, develop our MOOC policies and all that, especially Allah Yarham, Prof Hanafi. Okay, so if you want to read further, you have to look at this particular book and you will find uh, more details about what we went through uh, and all that. So if you ask me, uh, part four, was it worth it? Well, to me, anything that is done with the best of intention, inshallah, Allah will make ease and inshallah, it will benefit people. It's just that whether or not the people want to tell us or not. Lah. So in terms of university achievement, uh, if I'm talking as a director of University Teaching Learning Center, having the KPIs, uh, without the staff, what I had to do was actually to get um, um, research assistants to help this. Uh, so he, my, my staff becomes the project manager. Underneath him uh, was um, um, up in, uh, RAs, yeah? uh, which we paid uh, to help the instructors, the academics, to develop, the, to, to, to make sure that the technical part we settle they just provide the content part. So it's the content expert and the technical expert working together uh, collaboratively to develop the, uh, the MOOC on time. So UUM managed to fulfill the requirements and targets set by the Ministry of Higher Education in terms of the MOOC development and supporting of the DEPAN policy and the e-learning agenda, as well as the MEBHE, Alhamdulillah. And in terms of my own learning experiences, uh, sorry, in terms of my students' um, uh, learning experiences, they were mixed feelings. Some actually said they like it, uh, but there are also some who say they like it. For example, for my SGDY 5013, they like uh, the, the idea of having it in, in MOOC so they can actually visit and revisit how many times they want to at any time that they want to, but they still want to see my face. They don't want it to be 100% MOOC. MOOC is 100% MOOC, 100% online. So they, they still want me to see, uh, they still want me to, to be there, um, you know, uh, because I don't, one of them actually said, yeah, but you see, I paid to see you. <laughs> so I find it funny, but yeah. So um, yeah, so that's where we had to, um, I mean, I had to take their, their feedback into consideration, which means that's when I wrote another paper about, um, can all, uh, is MOOC for all students? So in that paper, basically, um, talks about um, um, what kind of situation where MOOC will be will be relevant lah. As for the SGHE five zero four five three, tak apa lah. SGDY five zero one three ni memang was not designed for MOOC. It was for the normal face to face. But SGE five zero five three, it was designed for eighty percent online and and twenty percent face to face. But even then. <coughs> um, the students were not uh, were were not into the MOOC. They they kind of like what they learn from the MOOC, but they don't like to to do it because they don't like to do the program as part of their confirmation. Ah, yang tu cerita lain. <laughs> yang tu bukan sebab uh, MOOC tu. Yang tu sebab dia pun tak puas hati uh, pasal benda-benda lain. So, but the point is, um, they did have um, uh, uh, they realized that they do learn. It's just that because they were also lecturers and then uh, tak lah macam mana, they pun ni pula dipegang jawatan walaupun belum sah dalam jawatan. So they had a lot of work that they need to do. They didn't have the time to actually um, do the learning. So that's one, one of the reasons why they, they felt that. Uh, some felt okay, some felt um, very stressful. Macam um, tu lah. Um, but for me individually, as a person, uh, uh, is this... Um, you know, is this worthwhile? Uh, yes, very, very worthwhile. Um, as mentioned by Chizaki just now, um, I wrote about um, what I did in my MOOC, uh, in my portfolio, um, uh, my edit innovation uh, that I did, and that was current lah, basically. Yeah. Masa tu tak, tak ramai lagi orang yang buat MOOC. Mungkin adalah satu orang yang pernah buat MOOC juga yang menang AN, tapi part of my innovation, I wouldn't say all, but part of my innovation was I also mentioned about how I did MOOC, uh, two MOOCs to be specific. 
in that uh, in that year and in that in that particular year juga um, open learning had this um, competition uh, and i kan dah 2018 i tak jadi director of the university teaching learning center so i masuk sebagai uh, participant masuk saja nak bagi seronok-seronoknya rupanya uh, uh, menang so that's dr izwan um, who is at that time the deputy director uh, bila dr shabani became the director um, but now uh, when i became the director again in U uh, utlc in 2021 last year uh, that's when i met Encik hasrul uh, dr izwan is actually my deputy director then and now uh, 2022 uh, when i stepped down i made uh, uh, dr izwan was uh, the uh, director uh, not was is still the director okay um and yang ni tak apalah yang ni short sendiri je kan yang ini yang paling i rasa seronok sangat sebab masa pandemik berlaku pada tahun 2000, 2020 um, um, ada rakan saya yang terpaksa mengajar khusus ni dan dia rasa macam macam mana I nak start daripada scratch ni tak tahu macam mana nak mengajar khusus ni and all that and I said never mind just use the the mood is already there so all all she needs to do is just to change uh, I mean uh, to change the instructor into into dia so dia boleh guna the mood and she benefited and and the best part of it and that that's like the icing on the cake when she was actually using the mood she had I she was uh, motivated to do her mo. Uh, so she was actually her course yang dia, dia suka nak mengajar ialah qualitative research method so she had developed the uh, qualitative research method mo as well so um, in terms of uh, future plans what do i want to do um, i want to update and review my mo courses tapi dah sekarang ni i nak pergi sabbatical pula so maybe after that lah baru i come back and 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 and, and do all those things um and of course i need to make sure that it is uh, the activities i'm engaging because um i did have some <coughs> feedback from uh, people uh, remember i gave you i gave my colleague to teach the course um when when i went to see the students as a dean uh, they knew that i was the one who actually developed the the mooc so they were like there's nothing nothing different from what you did and all that so I realized that um, we need to constantly improve our our activities um, so that they can see that um, that it is different lah. Kalau tidak, dia akan rasa macam uh, bahan yang dekat dalam tu dah bertahun-tahun lamanya. So um, yang tu lah, that, that will be my future plan lah to actually improve on the mood so that other people can also benefit uh, from, from whoever is going to become the instructor can benefit it as well. And we're also embarking on micro-credential for UTLC IAP alternative assessment module. And I'm hoping to now do my third MOOC, but because uh, we had problems in terms of which platform to use, so um, I'm um, putting it aside for, for, for now until that's resolved. But now that I know we're going to do it under UUM, so that's that shouldn't be a problem. But as I said just now, after I come back from my sabbatical, I would actually do this. So frankly speaking, uh, as a developer, and I'm speaking from my heart, uh, you don't need to be a star actor. Uh, tadi yang I kata Adi Putra tu, I was just joking. Uh, you don't need to become a star actor to be a great developer uh, when you're developing MOOC. You just need to have a growth mindset. When I say growth mindset, you're constantly learning and feedback from your students, are, no matter how, whether it's positive or negative or whatever, um, it's for you to actually improve yourself um and improve what what you have uh, designed and the 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 most important thing is for you to enjoy yourself doing it um i enjoyed myself doing the first move although it was stress it was not stressful it was stressful sebab tak ada masa nak buat i, I was tengah pegang jawatan uh, i was enjoying it so much that i managed to do it within three months so far belum ada lagi lah orang yang break the record dekat dalam uum ni yang buat move uh, kurang daripada tiga bulan untuk 12 minggu penuh eh? untuk satu kursus yang yang lengkap belum ada lagi uh, but the reason why i was able to do that because i was enjoying myself macam i was macam eh seronok pula eh seronok pula macam i was macam um, excited to to do the to do the activities in the assessment and and I, that's what i believe if you do what what and, and that's why i'm happy that in the last two the last two item all of you went above beyond the average 
that means you you believe you can do it and you want to do it because you need to have that um, i can see based on my experience as the director uh, many people who do not want to do it but they were asked to do by their dean or by their school or whatever not many finish because they don't have that drive they don't have the resilience to actually do it because it needs a lot of planning a lot of thinking um and you don't have to do like the way i did it i did it alone for both of the courses you can actually have a group of people like you teaching the same course collaboratively do it together um uh, and and do and do oh, sorry and do the uh upper, do the development and no work is perfect the first time if i were to look back at my my mood now i know it's penuh dengan error and cara buat tu macam tak kena and all that memanglah tapi i think sometimes we have to put the you have to put the foot down and just say let's just do it and then after that just like what we do our program we have constantly kita ada curriculum review macam itulah kita akan ada development review um, of our um, uh, our MOOC yeah so what we need to do is just constantly think plan develop uh, and then after that send for the quality assurance improve get uh, use it get the feedback continuously improve maksudnya it's like a, a cycle a never ending cycle of improving and and enjoying uh, seeing people um, growing because of your MOOC so the fundamental of uh, everything is actually to become reflective. Maksudnya, you selalu kena muhasabah diri lah. Tengok apa yang kita buat betul, apa yang kita buat tak betul, apa yang kita perlu, perlu perbetulkan dan sebagainya. And do it for the right reason. Niat dia yang betul lah. Bukan, uh, uh, when I showed this to some of some people and they say, I want to be like you, you know, I want you to, uh, I want to get the award. I cakap, I didn't do the. Uh, sekejap ya. Ada orang ketuk pintu. Okay, by the way, uh, since uh, Prof ada di sekejap, uh, okay, Prof, uh, actually I just want to interrupt a bit. Uh, yeah, actually, sure. we just share the link in the chat room for all the participants to uh, to fill up the, uh, the course, uh, this program evaluation everything, and then for us to, what we call it, to issue the e search for all the participants. So, okay, Prof, you can continue back. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, um, my friend is is worried that I'm uh, going to be here alone. Dia nak balik dah. Okay, anyway, um, do it for the right reason, as I mentioned just now, not for the award. I never thought of the award, uh, believe me. Uh, I was just doing it, having fun. Macam orang suruh masuk pertandingan, masuk pertandingan, tengok tengok dapat nombor dua. Huh? Dapat nombor dua macam, uh, lepas tu teruslah lagi, rasa macam lagi seronok untuk nak buat. So, you know, so you, 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 find the right intention and do it with positivity that you can do this so you do all of you have the positivity because you were all beyond the average so you can do this uh, you have to have to like to do it uh, and you know how to do to go about doing it and that's important and think like oscar wilde and i always put, use this as my benchmark lah. Um, when something is worth doing it's worth doing it well uh, so if you find that MOOC is worth doing for the right reason, do it well. Um, and just like what yeah, Imam Al Shafi'i says, and uh, um, and that's why I'm saying you have to take care of your heart. It's because it's when you when you're doing it for the right reason, people will benefit from it. So just do good, be good, and you don't you, you don't know where it's going to lead to lead you, but it will definitely be a sweet surprise. Um, I'm speaking of. Um, just having a having fun teaching, enjoying myself teaching, and and doing all the things that that's new to me, challenging myself constantly, and the sweet reward came unexpectedly. Of course, with uh, um, I had to submit my portfolio and all that, but the intention was actually to help the university. <laughs> and the next thing I know, um, uh, lo and behold, Alhamdulillah, Allah uh, given. Um, those uh, reward in in it was a very sweet reward. Twenty eighteen was the best year of my life, I think, for now. Okay, um, let's before I end, let's go back to the Mentimeter. The same Mentimeter, yeah. So I can actually stop sharing. I uh, only need to just to scan it.
All right. Are you able to see the next question? Uh, we cannot see anything in prof. Are you going to put the Mentimeter this now or what? Yeah, yeah. Okay, scan right. it. Uh, scan this. Um, are you able, uh, whoever who have scanned, are you able to see the question? Yes, Prof, so we can see the next question. Yeah, can you answer that, please? Are you still answering the question? Yes, Prof. Okay. I'm to leave on your Well, for those yang dah isi, dah isi pula. Yang dah, dah tulis tu, if you have any questions, please, um, I welcome. I, I've completed my presentation. Uh, the next, the next is actually for us to discuss or have any questions that you would like to ask. Uh, so, Prof, uh, while waiting for others to type in, uh, okay. Uh, so, the book itself is using the open learning platform. So, at the same time, you am still using LMS, its own LMS. Yes. So, there's no like the conflict uh, between LMS itself and the book. Um, kita buat macam ni, uh, siapa yang pakai, sebab dia macam ni, uh, sama ada awak nak buat MOOC ataupun uh, LMS, uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, sebenarnya kita kena tengok curriculum kita kan, uh, syllabus yeah. kita. So, katalah macam contoh, uh, kebetulan uh, saya punya kursus tu, memang yang SGD Y5013 tu memang 30% blended. Alright. Jadi, uh, memang kena pakai LMS lah. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan LMS saya adalah LM, LMS uh, gantian, bukannya mm -hmm. sokongan. Maksudnya uh, ad, akan ada beberapa uh, slot yang pelajar harus uh, buat aktiviti uh, secara online dalam talian. Uh, kalau secara face to face, maksudnya 70% face to face, 30% uh, apa ni atas uh, dalam talian. Tapi sekarang memandangkan sekarang ni dah semua disebabkan pandemik ni semua dah online jadi uh, kita, kita redefine dia sebagai 70% synchronous macam ni dan 30% asynchronous maksudnya dia terpaksa buat dalam online tapi dia buatlah ikut sekali dia masa bila-bila masa That, yeah. that's the LMS So largely um, I would say about 35% um, of our program uh, atau ya yeah, courses um RPTG uh, maksudnya dia gantian dia 30% blended the rest dia guna LMS tapi LMS tu hanya sebagai sokongan maksudnya dia dia akan ada uh, full uh, synchronous tapi LMS tu kalau macam katalah dia nak bagi aktiviti yang pelajar akan buat uh, apa ni at home ke apa ke untuk mereka yang dah buat MOOC which is like taklah banyak sekarang ni dah lebih kurang I dah lupa adalah 40 lebih mungkinlah I might give you the wrong figure. I probably more than that. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. Um, katalah it, it's about 40 something. So this 40 something courses, dia pun tak mas, uh, dia pun tak payah guna LMS dah lah. Okay. Okay. Uh, dalam pelaporan pelaporan kepada KPT tentang penggunaan uh, blended learning tu. Uh, kita akan hmm. kata uh, depa yang uh, ikuti MOOC ni 
uh, dia PTG lah maksudnya dia uh, apa uh, memenuhi lah syarat untuk uh, PTG tu de dengan syarat dia uh, pelajar yang enroll dengan pelajar yang buat dan pelajar yang habis tu sama. Okey. Uh, dia tak adalah macam enroll ramai lepas tu tak, tak siap kan tak jadi siap. susah lah untuk kita, kita nak nak suruh dia kata nak declare dia sebagai PTG tapi apa pun Uh, pihak kami dekat dalam uh, UUM ni We will uh, declare dia sebagai blended Dan tak perlu menggunakan LMS kita Sebab dia dah ada platform uh, open learning hmm. Tapi sekarang ni uh, kita pun sedang uh, fikirkan strategi lah Untuk nak uh, migrate kepada yang kita punya platform tu So lebih mudah lah untuk kita nak declare Yang mana satu That means you're still using UUM platform Uh, but it is uh, we will declare whether those courses are MOOC based or uh, the the normal conventional base. So it is not compulsory lah for IPT to use the open learning platform no. to deliver the MOC. No. Because no. I uh, I saw the pricing as well. Uh, maybe for IPT they charge something about almost two k per month. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Uh, dia dia actually de uh, depends on how 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 you want to dia macam package kan mm -hmm. how you what you want from them that will determine the pricing okay hmm. kalau you nak banyak lagi features uh, mahal lagi lah kalau you nak yang standard features murah sikit lah macam tu lah mm -hmm. hmm. tapi so, kalau dulu in 2015 to 2017 was free oh hmm. yalah time to waste Until 2020, it was still in 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 terms of UUM. Oh no no, 2019 kita dah tak bayar. 2019, 2020 kita dah tak bayar. And sampai 2018 lah yang free nya. Yeah, maybe they know again since the pandemic, everyone is moving to online. That's why they ni lah like the Google as well lah. Yeah. Before that, they give everything free for recording everything, and then now you have to pay. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's all ini lah uh, from my part. Uh, I think, uh, frankly speaking, aku uh, itself lah macam lot more way to go lah to come up with our own MOOC programs. We don't even have our own LMS system yet. Uh, that's uh, one thing lah. Uh, well, um, if it was for, it, kalau I guna cara um, Uh, you tak payah pun pakai um, LMS. You can actually use oh, Google. Moodle, Moodle is it? Uh, Google site, was it Google site or something? Oh, I can't remember. I pernah hadir satu satu training yang tapi masalahnya dengan I ni tak ingat lah pula. I wrote in a note, I can't remember. Because I don't use, I can't remember. Uh, it's free. I think it's under Google that you can actually do your, it's like something like a Moodle kind of thing mm -hmm. where you can actually use uh, in your, is it Google Classroom that you can actually put all your materials. So, dia macam lebih kurang macam. Yeah, Google macam Classroom, LMS. that's what we uh, currently do, uh, currently use. Uh, uh, I think yeah, yeah, majority yeah. of us is using the Google Classroom. Classroom. Lah. Yeah. Because, uh, In 2019, tiba-tiba suddenly the pandemic happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tak ready. And then we come up with a Google Classroom lah as the alternative to go for online. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, that's that's why uh, I mean as as a as a mantan director, <laughs> as an ex director of UTLC, all UTLC lah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's the 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 beauty part of having the pandemic. Everybody moved. See technology as something that cannot be denied. By hook, by crook, you have to near to move. You have no choice. Ah, uh, no choice, correct. Hmm. But even uh, so far, we use the Google Classroom lah. Uh, that's what I told you just now, right? Uh, right. Google at the beginning they gave everything free, like for us to do recordings, everything. Now this they charge, charge. for that. Yeah. Because uh, they know that you you that you definitely need it, can. Ah, uh, yeah, betul. Yeah. Uh, tapi Moodle pun ada yang uh, Moodle yang free kan? Yang if I'm not mistaken lah. Hmm, yeah, uh, no, one of the alternative that we need we ni lah uh, look into the Moodle as well. Uh, lah. So nak centralize the LMS uh, Google Classroom lebih kepada water individual punya ni kan? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Nine people managed to write down uh, while we spoke to each other. 
Um, so Alhamdulillah, um, ada yang kata better understanding in MOOC compared before. Uh, a good intro about MOOC as mentioned by Prof Time is the constraint we need to manage. Yeah, I managed to know the not rationale of developing the MOOC, understand what is MOOC better than before. Okay, uh, everybody can develop MOOC just like everybody can fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and understand what is MOOC better than. Okay, eh, macam, macam tiga kali je orang uh, tulis somewhere. So you all do sebelah sebelah ni. Kuwait uh, still need to learn more. Frankly, MOOC is too far to achieve, but we look forward to it. Okay. Dapat join penuh, tapi Alhamdulillah dapat banyak idea to develop MOOC dari pengalaman Prof. Okay. I managed to know the requirement for developing the MOOC. Learn more new knowledge. Okay. okay. I know the surface of MOOC. Hope we can get the slide later. Um, some of the slides I can give you, um, but I cannot give all um, because there are some information that um, I don't think I'll be able to share. Um, so, yeah, and I, I don't think you can have much, much from the slides too. Uh, I think it's more about how you plan. Um, dia punya rule of thumb, okay, kalau you tanya betul-betul dekat I, macam mana I, I, sorry? Um, if you ask me, like, really, really, um, what did I do? Um, I mean, what, did I have to go to the training, get the slide, tak ada, tak adanya. Um, pergilah training to understand what is the MOOC and all that. What is, macam basically, kena ada apa, 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 apa. Then from there, my, the way in which I design my MOOC is I base it on my course learning outcome. I look at what is it that I want from my students to get. I imagine how my students are going to sit in front of the computer tu, they boleh dah nak buat activity ni. Uh, my, you know, I put myself in the position of the students in order to decide on what kind of activities that will be suitable to them to make sure that it is realistic to them, to make sure that it is attainable to them. And it's from there, then I develop the assessment. So assessment, activities, dengan resources mesti kena in line with the cost and the outcome. Yang tu sahaja sebenarnya the the key. The next key is you just got to be creative. Yang tu kena tengok lah kot orang lain dia buat macam mana look at what other people are actually doing and see yeah. how they go about doing it. Sure. But program pun sekarang dah buat kali review dah untuk <laughs> to make it ni kan. Yeah. 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 That's why I ask question about the PA and FA things first. Just Hmm. Yeah. Okay, any more for the question from members of academician here? Ada soalan lagi ke? Silence, silence mean? Tak ada ke? Okay. Eh? Ah, okay, good. Small, okay, good. Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, we already at 4.33 p.m. past three minutes from the uh, schedule times. So uh, we would like to thank for, once again, for Prof. Dr. Fauzia Abrahim for this, what you call it, positive, a lot of uh, constructive input from you, especially on the MOOC. Uh, I do hope uh, everyone get the, what we call it, the, the uh, what you call it, maybe we create the, the knowledge on the MOOC. So, MOOC itself. Uh, for good each itself, uh, uh, we are the young, what we call it, young IPT, maybe uh, there are a lot of, what we call it, banyak lagi lah to learn, especially not just uh, MOOC, even for online, online things, uh, online delivering, everything, uh, there are a lot of things. But uh, this is uh, what we can consider uh, this session can consider as a, what we call it stepping stone up for us to uh, lead to move forward. Okay, once again, terima kasih pada Prof. Uh, saya untuk uh, before that, uh, once again, uh, just now we share the link in our chat room for you to fill uh, for the pusat to 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 what you call it, to issue the e search for everyone, and then. Uh, Boleh minta kita on the camera. We capture the moment uh, for this. Macam biasa lah. Okay, minta tolong on camera. Semua ada ni kat sini. 
Itulah kalau saya boleh nampak uh, selalunya saya akan tengok wajah whether dia faham ke tak faham. Uh, <laughs> silence means faham lah. Kena husnuzon. Tak sebab yalah, technically ni MOOC ni kalau saya tengok tu open learning tu memang banyak lah benda-benda yang ni. Tapi memang saya sendiri pun tak pernah masuk, tak pernah enroll to any courses even though they are giving free ni kan. Yeah, it needs commitment actually. Yeah, correct. So, um, on behalf of me, uh, right. I would like to say thank you. Terima kasih banyak-banyak kepada semua. Uh, mohon maaf jika ada uh, kesilapan daripada pihak saya yang baik tu uh, daripada Allah dan yang tak baik tu sebab kelemahan saya sendiri. Um, I wish you best and do hope that um, uh, you can do your own move. You can, you can, you can. InsyaAllah. The most important is the last question. Maybe in the future, kita ni lah, panggil prof lah untuk as a consultant ke mana-mana. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Macam lah, I pandai sangat. Uh, boleh lah, insyaAllah. We learn from the, from the, actually. Okay, thanks yeah. once again, prof, for your time. Uh, memang interested lah. Interesting lah the, the session. Okay. Uh, tiga tanda minta. Haikal tolong capture lah. Okay. Okay. Terima kasih to Prof and to all the members of academicians of, uh, from PUI for your participation for today's uh, event. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, we conclude our session here. Uh, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.